Gutters Collective. Back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh. And another one. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Like a mother. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Like a mother. Smack at it. Bye. Up. Bye. Up. Bye. All right, as you can tell by that thumbnail, I was going to do a reaction, right? But YouTube said, mm -mm, no, you won't. So I was getting, mm -mm. the footage from Pelican Bay is out of my reach. Uh, they age restricted it. They said, nope, Charlie, mm -mm, you can't show that. It's a little too vicious, a little too violent. So I said, you know what? So I don't need no footage, hey? I can talk. Guard! I'm going to talk about it. And in my noodle style in direct fashion, uh, I wanted to give you guys my take on the Pelican Bay riot of 2000. You know, the mystique of it. You know, it seems like this riot right here uh, was the, I wouldn't say the foundation. There was a lot of other riots, the riot of New Folsom. That, of course, wasn't on film. That was probably more vicious than the one that happened in Pelican Bay. And there were several others out-of-state riots that are a little bit more notorious. But it seems like this one gets all the notoriety because it was in Pelican Bay. Now, Pelican Bay, of course, is a notorious prison known to house the worst of the worst. Or at one point was. Okay? When I say the worst of the worst, I don't mean guys that are bad. I mean guys that had a bad reputation or guys that just didn't play no games. Um, leadership. In certain organizations, certain groups, this is where they sent them, where they felt that they should go. It was the end of the road, you know, the end of the rainbow. Wasn't no leprechauns and no gold. It was a whole lot of fucking steel, ugly weather, and no hope. And this is where they sent people. Now we know that High Desert is that one place where they send everybody. But at one point in time, High, uh, Pelican Bay was the spot. Now, in 2000, there was tension. And let me tell you something about a riot and tension in prison. Everyone feels it. Everybody knows what's going down and who's going to get fucking removed, except for the person that's getting removed. That's how it's always been. Uh, you just cut it with the knife. There's electricity in the air. The blockers know. The inmates know. The free staff know. Everybody knows something's going down. And quite possibly it could be prevented with some words, with some verbalization. You know, the wiggleization is real. Once people hit that yard with the mentality, we're going to get off. It's going down. There's nothing you can do to stop it. You just got to let the cards unfold. You got to let it play out. You know, in the year 2000 in Pelican Bay, this was the case. There was tensions boiling over between certain groups. Now, what led up to that? You know, I happen to have uh, some conversations. I've had some conversations with individuals that were actually there that were in the know, that know the reasonings behind it. You know, a lot of disrespect was going back and forth, uh, belittling, things of that nature that led up to this riot. Now, I'm not going to say um, the exact uh, uh, call that was made and why and how. and It's none of our business. At the end of the day, man, it popped. It popped off. And it was a vicious one. You know, I think at the end of this melee, there was over 36 people hit. Um, a few people shot. Um, maybe some deceased individuals. I know there was. Um, as well as a lot of people carried out on carts with knife wounds. That's right. Okay, it happens. In a place as desolate and as vicious as Pelican Bay, what do you expect? Okay, I wish I could show you the footage, but again, man, you can refer to YouTube. There's certain uh, platforms where the footage is, and you can take a look for yourself. Now, there's been a lot said on YouTube concerning this riot. You know, a lot of theories, a lot of myths, and I'm here to dispel any of that. It's like, yeah, fuck all that. I'm just keep it real. The fact remains, it was ma the majority of the groups that this was between, or the two groups that this was between, was the Southsiders and the Blacks. Okay? Now, the brothers, usually on a yard... They're going to maintain uh, 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 that basketball courts, right? It's not that no one else can play basketball. It's not that everyone don't have their own basketball uh, court. It's just usually the brothers, you're going to find them on the basketball courts or in their area working out. That's just how it is on the yard. That's prison life, right? Um, there's a lot of people that walk that track or run that track. They're working out. So this day, it was a typical yard day other than one group was actually ready for Gera. They were ready for war. Okay, and if, unless you know what's going on and you know how to spot these things, you would never know. One group came out fitted and committed to make it happen, whereas the next group were caught by surprise. Now, don't think that the other group that was caught by surprise didn't know that there was tension and shit was cracking. They just didn't know when. And that's the problem with these riots when you get caught with your motherfucking draws down. You don't know when. 
So I'm gonna go take them off. So I'm gonna take the shit. Hey, well, watch out, cause they're tripping. Nah, I ain't gonna trip right now. Hey, right? They're tripping. Um, people are gonna try to catch you when you're at your weakest point or when you're not paying attention. That's part of the game plan. There's a lot of people playing chess while others are playing checkers. Now, in this right, there's been a lot said that you know, and, and I'm here to dispel any rumors. Oh, the blacks got caught, and a lot of them ran. A lot of them didn't handle the business. Quite contrary to the fact of what you may believe, there was a lot of individuals that stood their ground. Now imagine a whole bunch of people running at you with pieces. When I say pieces, I mean pedazos, weapons. The first thing you're going to do is back on up about one foot and then come forward with two feet. Because you got to get your stance ready. Whoa, what's going on here? Your, your, your mind is analyzing everything that's going on in that yard. Who's approaching? Who's the adversary? Where's the enemy or the enemy guy or whatever you want to call him? Um, where can I go to fucking, for my safety and security, back up in the corner to handle my business? Now, let's keep it real. Let's not sugarcoat nothing and add preservatives. There were individuals that tried to hit the fence to go to the program office. People were trying to dig holes to bury themselves and run. And that's just a fact. You know, whether you like to believe it or not, whether you like to sit here and, no, nah, my peoples would never do that or not, that's the furthest from the truth. There are individuals that showed cowardice acts when it came to this right. People that laid it down, people that didn't involve themselves that should have. That's just part of the game. You can't expect on a prison yard everyone to be 100% go or 100% in. It's not full 60 for everyone. Some individuals don't want that smoke. They don't want to be involved. They're just trying to do their pinchy time, right? But at the end of the day, Holmes, you have no choice but to become involved in this because it's your safety on the line as well as the others around you. If you fuck with this homeboy who's getting booked by 10 dudes, you better jump in. But I go to the head knife, right? Don't matter. Get scraped a little. You know what I mean? Take one, give one to get some. That's how it is. Now, in, the, in 2000, if you got to see the film, and I'm sure you'll go look at it if, you have, if you're not up to date on it. It happened so long ago. Um, you'll see the reason why there's so much mystique and so much legend. This is a legendary riot. Like I said, again, it's because it happened at Pelican Bay. It's the biggest riot ever to happen at Pelican Bay. That in itself makes people wonder. You know, when you hear the word Pelican Bay, you could be walking down the street. Walk on by Pelican Bay. What? What did you say about Pelican Bay? You know what I mean? It's just, it's a head turner. It's a conversation starter. Um, but to actually have watched the footage, to actually have gotten at people that were actually there, um, it's a trip. You know, it's a trip on why, how, and how long this, this riot lasted. Now, if you get to see the footage, you'll see several of the individuals on the basketball court, me and the brothers, man, got ran up on and got approached, and, and flight got taken. Okay, it started on the left-hand side of the track, according to the film, where a couple individuals or one individual did get off on a brother that was walking on the track. And that's where it sparked. Now, what tripped me out about this riot more so than any others that I've seen is that it came in waves. It kept on going. It was going off on every part of the yard. So if you get to watch the actual film of the Pelican Bay riot, you more are focused on what's going on at the basketball court where the majority of the brothers were. You know, when the Southsiders, or allegedly, approached them and got off, um, you see, that's where the majority of the fighting went down. But it actually went down on every point of that yard. Now, that yard, anyone that's ever been to Pelican Bay, that facility, it's split yards. So you got different yards that are popping at the same time. This yard, this particular yard, is covered by camera at every angle. So you got to see a lot of the angles. But what they didn't show you, man, there was a lot going on way on the right-hand side of the yard. And it kept on going. While people were trying to contain what was going on here, people were running and falling and yelling and pushing and cussing and busting. These vaults over here, they stepped back and they kept sm and they kept smashing. And then I'm decided it's time for me to go. So I'm stopping and I'm jumping the vehicle. Only there was no vehicles here. It was fight or flight. It was either run because you're under the gun. And we ain't going against the guns. Or handle your business. Now, of course, several shots were fired. There was a lot of canisters, smoke canisters that were uh, distributed all over this yard. Did that stop these individuals? No. People had specific targets. People, I'm sure, were going for the gusto. When you're going in and you know this is what we have to do, this is the reasoning behind it, you go full full forward, forever forward, okay? This ride, what captivated me while watching this, and I've watched the, the, the video on it over and over again, is just if you pinpoint one person in the ride, and this is the way I do it, it's a different video every single time. If you just pinpoint one person, let me see how this individual is handling his business, you could see... Um, certain guys that stood their ground, man, righteously and deserve all that respect for handling their business. But they did what they're supposed to do. They didn't do nothing extra, nothing special. 
Um, you didn't notice a lot of guys running towards the individuals with knives. They just kind of stood their ground and handled their business. Now, there was one particular individual I seen who was knocking people on their back. One, I said two, I said three, I said four. Damn, what's up, homeboy? You want some more? There was, there was some guys handling that shit. Now, there's been a big rumor that has went on on YouTube. You know, and it was started by WAC 100 saying that Big U was actually in this riot to which Big U knocked out 32 Southside. I call bullshit. I called bullshit then. I call bullshit now. Um, he wasn't on this particular yard. He was in the shoe. The shoe had nothing to do with what was going on, um, you know, with these on that yard. Was he in Pelican Bay at that time? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. I wrote graffiti on the bus. He was. But he wasn't on that yard. That was not him knocking people out. Uh, it would be pretty superhuman to, for some one person to knock out 32 people with weapons. It just doesn't happen. Anyone that thinks it could happen, well, that about was not Bruce Lee or Lee, Bruce Leroy, right? Um, and I'm not saying he doesn't have hands. I'm not saying he probably couldn't knock out 32 people in real life. But 32 knife-wielding individuals that have a heart of stone that are really coming at you and trying to take your wind, I highly doubt that. I dispelled that rumor a long time ago. I called Mythbusters on that shit. It was Buster calling the Mythbuster, right? And I just said, no, nah, I don't think that's possible or that even went down. And I was absolutely correct. Um, in this case, you know, I hate to say it, one group had the advantage where the other didn't. Now, the numbers game on this particular yard in this particular riot was pretty even. Now, the Southsiders are always going to be the dominant group. They're always going to have more numbers than everyone else, no matter what yard you go to in the California Department of Corrections. That's facts, just the way it is. Every great once in a while, you might hit a yard where the brothers are deeper, but you got to understand the brothers as a, as a collective are more spread out. You got the ANCs, Northern Crips, you got the Southern Crips from LA, you got the Bloods, the Kumis, the, you know, the Jamas, 415s, whatever the case may be, the Muslims, non affiliates. Um, so they're pretty spread thin, but when something cracks off, based on your race and based on who you are, you're supposed to fucking back each other up no matter what. But I'm crippin'. Crippin' ain't real. You know what I mean? If I, so I do it, right? And there's a blood over there and he's getting booked by 10 Southside. Of course, the crip is obligated by the color of his skin and by what he is meant to go over there and help. Now, does that mean every crip or every blood is going to help the, the, op, the opposition basically fight who was the bigger opposition? No. And the same goes for a lot of other groups, man. They're not going to back the play of certain individuals. They just ain't going out like they just don't want to do that, man. Um, but you're supposed to. There's rules and regulations and politics that deem that you have to. Now, in this case, in this Pelican Bay right, there was a lot of individuals that decided that for no other reason, they were shook up. They were spooked. Nah, hell nah. I didn't start that smoke. Don't be no smoke. I don't want, I want, I don't want to be involved, right? Now, as a collective, the Southsiders were all in a penny a pound. You know, that doesn't mean every single one of the Vaultals handled his business, but that means every one of those Vaultals definitely was obligated to do that. And for the majority of them, they did. As you've seen, they took off running. They had certain points, man, I'm sure certain targets where they were going. Now, I'm not going to get into the intricate details of exactly who their targets were or why and what led up to this. Because like I said, it's none of our business, man. What's better left unsaid is the best thing to do. It's been so long ago. None of that matters anymore. It's different on the yards now. But what makes this fucking riot so notorious and so, you know, where people are so intrigued by it. Because I ain't going to lie. I was intrigued by it. I was intrigued. And I've actually participated in riots or have seen them, you know, all the way from a young kid to an adult. So I know what it entails. I know exactly what it is. It's chaos. It's utter chaos. It's, it's catastrophe. It's a lot. There's a lot going on there. You know, I've been hit with battery packs, uh, 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 locks with, in socks. Uh, I've been hit with, uh, with pedazos, uh, knives. You know, I've been stabbed on several occasions, hit with chairs, um, boards, all kinds of different things that you wouldn't. Fuck, where do you get a two by four and why? Oh, he sure got one, right? Fuck me up. Order that Casper from Playboys. He fucked me up. This is just how it is. You know, you grab whatever you can grab and you get off where you can get off. You know, and you hope that at the end when the smoke clears, Holmes, you're only scratched up a little bit. Now, there was a lot of individuals that actually got hurt very, very bad in this riot. But like I said, there's been other riots like the riot in New Folsom that was much, much worse, but only wasn't televised or filmed. You got to understand what Pelican Bay was an old Folsom setup. They had every part of this yard covered with, cam with camera, you know, and, and see that in itself, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of SEALs that noticed you know, they're trained for this. They notice the tension. They notice the way people, you know, when one said group is coming out, everybody is coming out. They're all fucking rain jacketed up, jacketed up, heavy artillery, heavy, heavy jackets. You know something's going down. These bottles are trained enough to understand the situation at hand. If you noticed in the video, 
too bad we couldn't have the video right here because I was like, I gotta show you how to pinpoint and everything. A lot of the brothers were in their white tees. Um, they were at ease. They were playing basketball. They were enjoying themselves. They're enjoying themselves on the yard. Now, what a lot of people don't know is prior to this, this was that was the full, the only second yard that they had come to, and I'd say maybe six months prior to that, they were on lockdown. Um, there was a lot of, of tension between the whites and the blacks at that time, whereas both groups were getting off on each other. This was only the second full yard that they had had in Pelican Bay in a long time. See, a lot of people think that. It's just a daily thing and the tensions boiled over. But no, there had been other things going on prior to this. This is something that happened behind the scenes that spilled out into the yard quite viciously. Now, it happens all the time. You know, people are not seeing eye to eye. The first way to work things out usually are talks. Peace talks is what you would call it. You know, this guy's going to get at that guy's going to get at that guy. And if certain individuals are disrespectful, they must be removed off the yard. or They got to go. Then they got to go. It's usually up, left up to their own people to handle their own business. Other people are not going to get involved other than putting out there why this guy shouldn't be on the yard, why they can't function with them. And usually for the most part, 99.9% of the time, that individual is going to get removed off said yard by his own people because he's causing too much friction. He's fucking up the flow of what's going on on that yard. But if for some other reason, um, they decide, nah, man, this is the homie. We're going to stand our ground. We're going to back this play. Well, then this is the type of shit that happens. I'm not saying this was the case in this riot. I'm just saying this is the type of things that happen. Basically, man, if you're not going to deal with them, then we're going to deal with you all. You know, that's been the word forever. That's how it's always been. My whole thing with this situation is the mystique of it. Why people are so captivated by the Pelican Bay riot. Was Big U really there? No, he wasn't really there. Why are we so captivated? Because it was Pelican Bay. For no other reason. It could be a riot in any other prison. Ironwood, uh, Salinas Valley, Sentinella, you know what I mean? Tracy, whatever the case um, it's because this one was actually on film. And that's because the Placas knew what was going to happen. If you think in your fucking mind that they didn't know, they didn't know to what degree. They knew something was going on in the yard. I don't think they they thought that a riot of that magnitude, of that scale was going to happen. But they, I definitely can say that they knew there was something going down. Everybody knows. Like I said, I've hit yards before. Don't, 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 don't. And then I get on that yard, I look around and say, damn, who's getting removed? I hope it ain't me, right? Did the shit that I fuck up to what degree? Guard! To what degree of fucking up did I? Because you can feel it in the air. I can feel it coming in the air. And yeah, hell yeah, you can feel it coming in the air. And it's definitely going to go down. In this case, I'm sure people felt it in the air. But they didn't fucking react quick enough. Now, a lot of people have got at me. Hey, Gunner, why do they always say all the blacks ran and they didn't? They didn't? No, no. Some did run. A lot of the different races ran. Some ran to the fight. Some ran away from the fight. You know, some fucking ran to establish, like I said, a, a, a foundation so they could handle their business. Some ran to higher ground. Some fucking tried to jump the fence and go to the program office. They tried to run away from the bullshit, right? Um, there was a lot of running involved. Okay. Um, but to sit here and defecate on the character of one group and say that they weren't about their business would be total and utter bullshit, man. Everybody in prison, I mean, everybody is about that. Everyone handles their business to different degrees. Of course, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, man, these fuckers are better than the, than the baddest. And nah, man, at any given time, anyone will get off. At any given time, everybody's the baddest, man. We're talking about grown men in prison, man, that have no hope, that are sitting there in fucking uh, Pelican Bay State Prison, man, over there with fucking rain coming down on them trying to play basketball. You think these guys are just going to fucking run? You know what I mean? They're going to run to it. Let's get it. Let's get it on. Order the Mills Lane, right? That's just how it is. Um, but, you know, just the mystique of this of this riot, man, has always been captivating to me. Um, like I said, I wish I could show you guys the footage. YouTube won't allow me to. Please go look at the footage, look it up, and pinpoint one person, just one. And you'll get 36, 37 different views of this because every person you pinpoint from a different angle, you get to see what they've done. And you'll see some guys run, some guys jump fences, some guys hide, some guys bury themselves within other group segments. Um, you're just going to see a lot. Make sure that you tap in, you trip out on it. Um, and with that being said, that's my perspective on the Pelican Bay ride. Do I think it could have been avoided? Obviously, anything, any violence could be avoided, um, but it happened. You know, as far as the, the myth of Big U, he was in Pelican Bay at that time, absolutely, but he was in the shoe. He was not on the yard. He did not knock out 32, 36 people, whatever they said. Um, none of that happened. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. You get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about being you, man. And doing what you can for your family, man. The holidays are coming up. Happy holidays to those of you that support me. And to those of you that don't, man, happy holidays. I hope you guys have you know, a great holiday as well, you know. Um, 
and just the way it is. If you like me, hit that thumbs up with a, uh, you know, a thumb like this. You know what I mean? Like and subscribe. If not, thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I truly believe in, and that's the coming together of all people. Man, let's do it for reals. For really reals? For really reals? The gun. Bang, bang. And in that fashion.